Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're doing a bit of a meta update. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing five heroes or five strategies that the pro teams have been using in Dream League. And I don't like these strategies. I think that these heroes or strategies are underwhelming. And I personally just want to discuss them with you guys, kind of get your input in the comment section down below. And of course, give my opinion on why I do not like these five heroes or strategies in the current meta. So without further ado, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you like these meta update sort of videos and let's get into it. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do wanna let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're gonna teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you wanna become absolutely broken and really take your game to the next level, I'm going to be able to help you because sometimes the guides on YouTube, there's either not enough of them, they're not specific, or they're just tier lists, which I know you guys love, but at the end of the day, the Game League website is gonna help you get to the next level. So click the link down below and sign up. So the first one on the list is Witch Doctor Position 5. I personally don't like Witch Doctor Position 5 a lot, but I'm actually a big fan of Witch Doctor. I think Witch Doctor offlane is one of the most underexplored things in Dota right now, and I'm surprised more teams haven't at least tried to run an IO Witch Doctor team comp at one time or another in this tournament. The reason why I feel this way is I just think that the overwhelming amount of heal is quite incredible. It's a very strong lane, it's hard to counter pick, I don't think Spirit Vessel is a great item and that item is quite counterable. Uh, you could just buy Lotus or, I don't know, have a Shadow Demon as your 5, that would be a bit weird with IO I guess, but point being is I think that this hero has a lot of potential as a core. And the reason why I like it more as a core than a support is I think in order to make the heal build work, you need to be tanky. You have to be able to survive. So the problem is these Witch Doctor position fives are trying to play the heal build. If you don't believe me and you're thinking to yourself, well, a lot of them are probably just going stun build speed, right? Maybe they're just going stun and, and maledict. So is that fine? I honestly think Witch Doctor as a stun maledict hero isn't very good. So I think that the fact that they're trying to do heal Witch Doctor makes sense but it's lost six of its eight games. And the reason why, in my opinion, is number one, I don't think the hero is that good of a laner. You might be like, oh, but Maledict is a pretty good laning spell. And the heal is a pretty good laning spell. And while I would agree, you can't sustain it because in order to sustain the heal build properly, you need mana boots. I really don't think there's much of a way around this unless you're gonna buy four clarities and two mangoes, in which case your net worth is going to be decimated just to make it through the laning stage or do well. I don't think that works. And so I've seen this idea of throwing blood grenades at people with Maledict, and yes, it does a good amount of damage, and sometimes Witch Doctor support cooks. And I've played it in my pubs. I played it, to be fair, as a position four, and I cooked. I did great. I owned. But at the same time, I was like, ah, I feel like if the game didn't go as well as it did, because I really own my lane. My lane didn't go as well as it did, and I just died early in the fights, the heal would not be able to get its value. Because the value of Witch Doctor heal is the longer you stay alive, the more heal you pump out. It's as simple as that. So as a support, I just don't really see the value. It's hard to go, because what people are doing is they're going Maledict and heal. It's hard to use Maledict without putting yourself in a bad situation. And you might be thinking, okay, well, just play off Death Ward and heal. Just think as a support, it's not good enough. Really don't think it's good enough. And so yeah, my take is that Witch Doctor Position 5 is a little bit overrated. It's not being picked a ton. I've just seen it a few times and I've played against it a few times. I've watched some replays of it actually from White Mom and I don't think it's the worst thing in the world, but I'm personally not a huge fan. Then we have Clink's Position 4. I cannot state how much I dislike Clink's. Now to be fair, to be fair, I think Clink's as a hero, similar to Witch Doctor, has some merit. And sometimes this hero really does seem to pop off because when you hit your timings, you split push like a madman. You can take towers with tar bomb and, and the skeleton walk. You can solo kill supports. You can help with Roshan really, really well. You kind of do everything. Like frankly, when this hero is having a good game, you can push, kill, Rosh, get vision, ward, pick up runes. It does everything. And so you might be thinking, okay, I'm gonna go pick Kling support right now. And honestly, I understand. It sounds pretty good on paper. However, I feel like in play, it just doesn't play out. I think the hero is a little bit squishy in the laning stage. And even though it can heal itself by using its third ability, I just feel like its ability to harass is pretty underwhelming. I don't feel like it's that great. I feel like even at level two, it's just not that great. I've had multiple clinks in my lane and pubs just feed their brains out because the hero is squishy, doesn't have disengage. I feel like even with strafe, it doesn't do that much damage. Sometimes it's okay if there's like a low HP support, like a Crystal Maiden, but Crystal Maiden, I feel like is good against clinks because it can kill him like in the lane very easily. 
So every time I lane with these clinks, it feels like I'm just playing with an offlaner. Sometimes that can work in Dota where you have a lot of greedy heroes, but I just feel like for the most part, I'm just playing with an offlaner. The guy doesn't help my lane very much. He's level five, I mean, it, 11 because he's having a very hard time getting kills like this hero doesn't roam well and people will tell me speed it does roam well it does roam well yeah maybe in your 3k pub where it's extremely easy to hit level six okay even that's not true all right maybe that was a bit too harsh of a flame because it's honestly not that easy to hit level six even in your average pub as a support especially if your wisdom runes get yoinked right you'll never hit level six as clank it's really hard you can't farm neutrals not until you're level six you don't roam well you're slow at level five is 22 percent for two point five seconds it's horrible as a slow i just when this hero falls behind it's so useless it's so useless when it's behind like yes when it's having a good game man this hero pops off but whew, when it has a bad game it stinks this shit stinks all right then getting into the third hero is storm spirit and i don't really think this is much of a hot take the heroes five and nine at the Dream League Major, and to be fair, stats like this over the course of 14 games, I don't love pulling the largest conclusions out of them. At the end of the day, I don't even know who played the heroes. You know, it could have been the teams that are not doing well. But either way, I personally, when I see Storm, it forces teams to pick Io or Pugna. Like, I, I don't know which game it was, but I watched a Dream League game. I can't remember the exact match. I watched a Dream League game and they second phased Io, and I'm like, the only reason they picked Io is because they eight picked Storm or six seven Storm, whatever pick it was. Right? That was the, I'm like, the only reason they're picking Io here is because Pugna got banned in second phase bans, and Io was like the other Storm option, and they had Storm. I'm like, you had to pick this hero, and you might be like, oh, but okay, Pugna's a pretty good hero in the meta, and I actually really like Pugna. I'm, I'm actually quite a big Pugna fan. I, I love the hero right now. So, like, personally, huge Pugna fan. I think more teams should be considering this hero, uh, even without storm and and teams do for that matter but it's just like when you pick storm you have to pick pugna even if you don't want pugna even if it doesn't fit your strat for the game you have to you have to i think storm without these mana amp heroes is just not that good i think it's quite bad almost always like try playing a pub on storm without a mana hero i mean to be fair this hero requires a lot of understanding of mana management and so like you can pull it off without these amp heroes like these mana amp heroes but damn it's tough it is tough like really hard to balance fighting and farming on this hero without one of these mana ampers and so personally yes i think if you're gonna pick storm you run it with pugna i think this combo has a lot of synergy and this is the way to go but i don't really feel like the hero is much of a lane dominator Yes, it can roam well. If it's having a good game, it can kill the offlaner with the full mana pool, but it requires a full mana pool. Um, in terms of scaling, I don't think like it scales that well compared to some of the other broken mids that play similar to Storm. The examples of that would be Void Spirit and Timber. If you can pick one of these two heroes, I would almost always pick them over Storm. They're also flex picks to some extent in the current meta. I would always pick those heroes over Storm don't require as much babysitting. They scale better than Storm, in my opinion. They hit a harder time early game. I just don't really get why you would pick Storm. That's my personal take. I think sometimes you might be thinking, oh, but what if they lack control? But I kind of feel like then just pick Void Spear once again. I just kind of come to the same conclusion uh, based on the hero's current level of strength. The only redeeming quality I think there is about Storm that people don't abuse is the Shard, which kind of blows me away. If you don't know what the Shard does, it upgrades your Overload, and it makes it where you get three charges on not only yourself, but everyone around you. This is a 100 damage nuke, so every single ally around you hits for an extra 300 damage after three autos. And they also slow and slow attack speed. And it gives them attack speed, by the way. So it amps your attack speed and everyone else around you who gets affected by it, it affects their attack speed. And it's a ton of damage and a ton of control. And every time I've used the shard, it feels wonderful. And I'm like, why in the world do more people, and especially pros, not prioritize this? Frankly, I don't know the answer to that because they still don't. And most people don't. I think they just don't look at it as important as completing their next item. But I think that's super wrong and people should take a look. All right, getting into the fourth hero, I truly, I truly hate. Like, I do not mind playing against it ever. Like, personally, I never feel threatened by this hero, ever. Every time I watch it, it just seems to lose as the game progresses. And that's Templar Assassin. Now, maybe I'm a little bit biased by the stats, but trust me, every time I play against this hero in a pub, I'm like, eventually it's gonna fall off. Like, that's always how I feel. 
if, if she doesn't 1v9, which some players are really good enough to pull off and like respect to them. For instance, Parker on Beast Coast, I actually watched some of his TA pubs and I'm like, yeah, he, I think he really understands the hero. But even then, I think he played a game in the Stream League. Yeah, he played a game in the Stream League and they picked it into Medusa. They picked it into Medusa. And I was thinking they had a pick, right? So the enemy team 6-7 Medusa, you have the response. They picked TA. Why would you pick TA in the Medusa? Please explain. Like, the, I was watching the replay. I'm like, oh, they, they must have counterpicked uh, an early TA or uh, with the Dusa or late pick the Dusa. I load up the replay. I watch it. And I'm like, wait, they picked it immediately after the Dusa. And this is my problem. It's like, if you pick TA into some sort of Terrorblade or Morphling or any sort of hyper carry, especially the ones that by Scotty, you will get destroyed at some point. Like, you're gonna get to the point where if you mess up, and they go on you, you will die and you can't man up. Scotty completely destroys your hero. Completely. Like, really feel like you can't do anything. Like, some of the other heroes that get wrecked by Scotty, I feel like they have somewhat of a response, but with TA, oof, it's rough. And yeah, in the Deuce game, Scottied up, did no damage, fell off, lost. To be fair, uh, he was actually having a good game and his team was not doing the best, so like, to give him some credit, he did make the hero look pretty decent, he owned his lane quite hard, but I don't know man, it just falls off, I don't know what to say, I feel like it takes a ton of space, and what it does with taking that space is just underwhelming, you know, it farms for pretty long, and when it comes out with those items, it's like, maybe you should have had a Beastmaster taking that space, or a Timber, you know, or, like, not really Void Spirit because he is in Flash Farm, but the other flash farmers in the meta, the heroes that can take these major stacks, I guess the only really main two that come to mind, maybe they're, I guess Medusa, but you know, that hero is often banned, to be fair, so is Timber and Beast, but you know, one of those three heroes, if you have the option, are way better, if you're playing pubs, you're looking to pick for pubs, I would never suggest picking TA or over one of these other meta heroes, just, just not, nah, I just wouldn't recommend it. And finally, the last one is actually a hero that uh, certainly is good. So I, I'm not a hater of the hero, it's Medusa. It's uh, frequently picked. I don't think it's actually as broken as people think, to be fair, but I do think it's broken, uh, not as broken as people think. Moving ahead though, uh, what I do wanna say is that I think Medusa offlane is not as good as people think. Now, I do think Medusa offlane is good because I think Medusa is good, but I was recently watching TSM against Evil Geniuses. Okay, this was uh, a game that happened yesterday, assuming this video comes out today, but the 14th, but I was watching it in the draft and they picked Dusa 6-7, okay? The enemy team 8-picked Animage. And you might be thinking, okay, so maybe it's a good time to put the Medusa offlane, right? Uh, they picked Animage on 8, you've got counterpicked, maybe swap it to the offlane. But I think this mentality just straight up sucks. I, I don't understand it. I don't think this is how pro teams should look at it. Because, number one, I don't think Animage actually is that hard of a counter to Medusa at the pro level. The reason why is when people group up and they work together and they stay together and protect each other better, which people get better at as, as they climb, and you know, obviously the pro level is going to be the optimal of this, or the, or the best example. I don't think anime is very good against Medusa as a carry. I think it's quite mediocre and often is countered by the high tempo that Dusa can provide by hitting a 20 minute Butterfly Manta and starting to siege towers and take Roach. I think anime is horrible against this type of tempo that Medusa definitely can set. So. I don't think it's that bad. And then EG picked Skywrath, Void Spirit, Techies. I don't think Dusa is that bad against Techies. I think it's good against Storm. I think it's good against Skywrath, like straight up a counter, because it doesn't care about the burst for the most part. I think it's fine against Void Spirit, and then they picked Brew. And to be fair, they last picked Brew, so, you know, that, that's another discussion. But even Medusa against Brew, like, I think it's fine. You get lifted up, but it's, it's fine. The lane is good and you're gonna free farm. But they ended up putting it off lane and they picked a Magnus. And I was just like watching, I'm like, why? Why? I, I understand why, because it's like they have an anti-mage and a brew, but my my perspective, and, and I, maybe you guys disagree, maybe you disagree. It's, I'm just trying to really educate you on how I see Dota and how some people see Dota, which is if you have a good lane and you have some good, good matchups, they could have counterpicked the anti-mage, right? They could have said, we're gonna pick an off laner that makes anti-mage have a tough time. Then we're gonna have a decent Medusa game, the Animage will be shut down, and then when Animage is shut down, Deuce is having a solid game because they picked Brew, will be off to the races. And that's how I would see it. But then they put the Medusa offlane, who got dumpstered by the Animage, first blooded, and, and then the, the, the last pick Magnus against the Brew, I don't even think is good against Brew, because the lift is still good against the single target hero of, of Magnus, so I don't get that. I was just like, what? 
And then they, they have a Medusa TA Magnus Drakor. How do you make that work? You have to pray to God. You have better lanes, but you have Dusa against the Animage and Magnus against Brew, which is even. They had TA against Void Spirit, which I think wins. Pretty sure that wins, so they got that going. But man, I'm sorry that I'm ranting so much, guys, but hopefully you kind of enjoy my passion and, and understand my opinion, because I feel very strongly about it that these there's too many teams following this trend of Put the Dusa off lane. Oh my god. They picked Mana Burn Hero. We have to put it off lane. Or they picked Morphling. It has to go off lane. Yes, it's countered, but I really feel like there's other responses, uh, like picking better off lane heroes and, and shutting down the safe laner if you have the option to do so. So, yeah, that's my take on it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, you enjoyed uh, this meta update and my very passionate takes on these heroes. I do feel very strongly about things and. Uh, Maybe you guys do as well. Though it is a very emotional game. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.